Hello and welcome to this week's What's Hot and with volcanic ash from the Philippines, the residue of the bushfires in Australia and the coronavirus in China. Investors have been piling into surgical wear stocks and lingerie retailers. My more resourceful friends have been using bra cups after a run on masks and this looks a good buy on Alibaba, surgical face mask making factory in China for 20,000 US dollars or you can stock up with the cast-offs from your boudoir or bikini tops perished with suntan lotion. Which brings me to EasyJet which has weathered the storm afflicting the airline and aviation industry. It's gaining customers from strike-stricken British Airways and Ryanair. It's benefited from the demise of Thomas Cook and the budget airline says it has started its new financial year strongly and has upgraded its passenger revenue guidance. Well another share riser early this week was Eve Sleep. Many of us have bought into the terror that is extra large gigantic bed bugs and we are keen to believe that better trading follows a good night's sleep and we've all bought into the Eve mattress story and there's a 20% discount and a January sale but please no discount to the takeover offer being made for serious minerals by Anglo American. The current offer on the table values the company at £405 million down from the lofty previous valuations of one and a half billion pounds. Now on Thursday we do get a Q4 production report from Anglo-American. Now we are not expecting any update on the takeover offer for Sirius but neither were we expecting Meghan Markle to be given the title of a divorced woman. But the thing was she was divorced prior to marrying Harry. Royal speak is so Orwellian. Well Wednesday we get a production report from Pier Antofagasta Two. Also on Wednesday we hear from Pets at Home which is positioning itself as a destination of choice for its grooming parlours and veterinary practices so it's a full day out and that is just for the pet owners. Now that's a Q3 report for Pets at Home. We also get a Q3 trading update from Burberry and we'll find out if the company's foray into gaming led to increased sales of its puffer jacket. Now the B-Bounce game is where players race a deer-shaped character to the moon while donning the latest Thomas Burberry monogram puffer jackets. I'm not sure if that has universal appeal but no doubt we will find out on Wednesday when we hear from Burberry. On Thursday we're going to be hearing from ASOS or As Seen on Screen. Now remember poor trading in November 2018 sparked what would be a string of profit warnings in 2019 but as analysts at Hargreaves Lansdowne announce the majority of the transformation is now said to be complete. What is particularly promising is that ASOS has made it through the festive season without flagging up a distress signal this time. And you can see from the year chart, the stock is breaking out of the doldrums. Will that be a case for WH Smith when it releases its trading update also on Wednesday. Well we might learn why head of books Pete Selby left just after nine months but what is clear is that travel does well, High Street doesn't. Companies reliant on its concessions at airports and train stations. Will it be impacted by the turbulence in both the aviation and train sector as discussed earlier and will its messy high street shops weigh on the business overall? They are so in need of a feng shui makeover. Well in terms of the Chinese New Year it is the year of the rat. People born in the year of the rat are traditionally considered to be imaginative, generous, successful, popular, curious and of course 
Virile. That's it for now. More of the same next week.